my beautiful people. I am Natasha Hastings, if you didn't know by now. Um, I'm back for a Q&A, AKA tea time session. And I took the time this time to write down the questions. I selected five questions for the sake of not allowing this video to be too long. I know some people don't want to sit down and watch a 30 minute video. So I had some questions left over from the last Q&A session that I did. So I decided to just choose from those and yeah get this out to you guys so another <laughs> quick uh it's really none of your business but i'm gonna tell you anyway i just came home from practice and i figured let me just knock this out i haven't even showered yet so again this is how much i love y'all but let me get right into it this first question is from by the way these questions are from snapchat so yeah uh this first question is from i'm great 729 and she had a really great question, or I'm assuming it's a she. <laughs> she said, um, how do you and your team plan races for this season? And I felt like that was a really good question because as a professional, we have, um, I should have muted my computer, but as a professional, we have uh, a lot of control, I will say, over how we, um, structure our season um, we're not a part of a team say so like in college your coach pretty much chooses the season the meets for the season for you and a lot of that is based on um, like your national championship then your conference championship and then everything is kind of built around that so as a professional every season there's always the big picture which this is a world championship year so everything is going to be geared towards making the team this summer in london so First things first is the national championships in June. Yeah, having the trials in July last year kind of threw me off, but the national championships are held in June. So that's the first and foremost meet that you know for sure. Then you go back to um, the big meets around that. So we have the Diamond League meets, um, and then we have, um, I don't know what we call the meets, the World Challenge meets. I had a brain fart for a second. So. Once you figure out what that schedule is, the IAAF will put that schedule out for the year. You then sit down with your coach and, or I sit down with my coach and we discuss what we're working on, what our goals are, and how we want to structure the season to go towards the ultimate goal of making that team and going on to London and making the podium. So you'll sit down with your coach, um, structure that and then you'll pass that on to your agent and then it's your agent's job to if you haven't already been invited to a lot of those diamond league and world challenge meets to then get you into those meets so i, th I thought that was a really great, great question because a lot goes into um selecting your season and people don't even realize that some of those meets you have to be invited or you know just think about there's only eight lanes on the track for the sprints. I know distance, they can put more than eight people on the track, but there's eight lanes on the track that pretty much everyone in that event for the year in the world is competing for. So keep that in mind when, you know, you see a certain track meet and you're like, hey, why isn't such and such there? And some of it is choice. They just choose to forego that one or we just couldn't get in. So good question. The next question is from Stephanie Manu 11 and she asked, how many days do I train? So I'm not, I picked this question because I'm not sure if I've answered it, answered it before, but I train five days a week. Um, and of course that changes when I'm competing. If I am competing, I typically travel, say the meet is on Saturday, I'll travel on Thursday. So I'll train Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, depending on what time my flight is Thursday, maybe I'll train before I get out, um, rest Friday or do a light shakeout more than likely I'll do a light shakeout before competition on Saturday. But if I'm not competing, I train Monday through Friday with weekends off. And other groups are different. This is what, this is a system that my training group has. Some other groups train um, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday off, Thursday, Friday. I've heard of some groups train straight through. Now keep in mind when we say training, we're training Monday to Friday, Monday to Saturday. Some of those days are active recovery days. So we're not out there going 100% every day, six days in a row. 
but we are being active and keeping the body moving and training essentially. Uh, next question is from Emily and I got this question in several different forms. This was a very popular question. How do you stay confident on the track? And when I say I got it in several different forms, I got it, you know, how do you stay confident after injury? How do you stay confident after failure? And again, I thought this was a very good question because that is a thing that it's not just a track question, it's a life question. And the thing is short term memory. Um, I feel like every race has its lesson. Every um, life event has a lesson in it. So definitely, you know, reflect on the moment, reflect on the race, reflect on the game and figure out, you know, what it was that you learned, what positives and negatives can you take away from that and use it for your next race or your next game or whatever the case may be. But that feeling of failure and that feeling of falling short, you got to, you have to have short term memory. You can't remember that because, or let me not say remember that you can't carry that on to the next event. So I think that honestly starts way before you get to the line. It starts with your daily preparation in terms of your training. I'm a firm believer. If you know that you're doing the work, when you show up, that's the first thing that is a confidence booster that you know you've done everything that you could up until that point to do your best. The comparison I like to make is I remember when I was studying in college um, or school period, if I knew that I did all my homework, I did all my assignments, I studied for my exam, when I showed up for the exam, I was confident. But if I know that I didn't do any of that, then I knew it was going to be a rough day or I probably wasn't going to do as well as the on the exam. So I like to make that comparison because it's a lot, it's the same um, in competition, you know, knowing that you've put the work in. And then when you say in terms of injury, if you're a doctor, you're a phys, um, physiotherapy, whatever work they give you to do with them and then on your own to come back from that injury, you have to, have to, have to give all of that 100% and trust the program. And then again, that's where short-term memory comes in because you're going to have that fear of it happening again. But a lot of times we can manifest our fears by just focusing on those things. So short-term memory, guys. But do your your work in between to prepare yourself for those moments. Um, another Emily, Emily M24 asked, what's my favorite speed workout? So it's no secret that I like to run fast. Even in my 400, I get out the blocks like a 200 maybe. Um, I actually love to do my favorite workout and I've probably been doing this since I was like in middle school, 30, 60, 90s. And um, some days we'll do it 330s, 360s, 390s, um, or we'll do 30, 60, 90, 30, 60, 90, 30, 60, 90. But those are my favorite. It's like true raw speed work days. And even though it seems like an easy workout, in the moment it's okay, but it's one of those that it takes me a little longer to recover after the fact. But those are the workouts that I know like I'm working on true raw speed and, and I really like that workout. So the final question is from Tyra Nicole and this is another very popular question and I think it's a very good one. Do I still get nervous? And I every time I answer this question I say the same thing. I hate to tell you that feeling never goes away. <laughs> you will always get nervous. But what does change is you learn how to manage the nerves. Um, my mom and even Michael Johnson used to tell me this. You want to have the perfect balance between nerves and adrenaline. You don't want to be too nervous and you don't want to have too much adrenaline. You want it to be just right. And when you're not nervous at all, I can tell you it's probably not going to be that great of a day out on the track um, and in anything in terms of performance. So for me, I had to learn the art of mastering and controlling the nerves and doing the things I've, I've talked previously about, you know, chanting my I am's to myself and going over the things that I've done in training and, you know, who I believe I am. Those are all sort of things that um, go into me controlling my nerves and not allowing the nerves to overtake everything. And you can even burn yourself out energy wise by allowing yourself to get too nervous. So 
it's a matter of learning how to cont contain those nerves and control them, but they never, ever go away. So, um, yeah, that's it. Um, hopefully this video wasn't too long. I don't know what the time was in timing myself, but anyway, um, hope you guys enjoyed. Of course, if you have any further questions, leave them down below. I'm going to try to do these types of videos every Friday, if not every Friday, every other Friday. Um, so leave your questions down below. Hopefully you like this video. Give me a thumbs up and please, please, please subscribe. And I will see you the next time. Peace out.